Well, good morning. I'd like to welcome you to New Life Church online service this morning. It's a pleasure to be able to share with you uh, the Word of God and to, and even in the comfort of your own homes in this particular time and season in which we find ourselves today. We're here to rejoice in the Lord our God has done great things for us. Where the scripture says we're off, we should be glad. We should be of a desire to rejoice in the Lord our God this day for the wonderful salvation he has provided all of us. But first of all, I'd like to uh, read a, a, just a few verses of Psalm 145. It's a psalm of David. And let's just read those words and just drink it in and the source of encouragement that it brings to us uh, as God's words Uh, is expanded and read. It says, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Every day, it says. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another and they will tell of your mighty acts and that's what we're doing today this current generation commending his works to another they will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and i will meditate on your wonderful works that's what we're going to look at this morning praise god all his wonderful works and who he is they will tell of the power of your awesome works I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. What a wonderful exhortation to praise and to worship God. So as we uh, come into uh, listening and uh, singing along, hopefully, with the first song that we have this morning, a song of praise and worship, uh, just open your heart and sing uh, from the very depths of your soul in thanksgiving for what the Lord Jesus means to you. God bless you. Cause you pick me up, see, cause you 
heading into December this week and what a year it has been. Like many churches we started 2020 with a fresh vision. No one could have believed or imagined that just a few months into the new year the entire world would shift through coronavirus pandemic, experience worldwide protests against police brutality or that people would encounter uh, life-altering events such as losing family members and loved ones. The most used words this year during this pandemic have been words like unprecedented, furlough, lockdown, social distancing. Many of these words we had never used before. 2020 held such high hopes for many of us. We'd made plans and set goals. But never has there been a year like 2020 where the word hope, the word hope has been used more than ever before. And since March, We've been saying things like, or we may have heard each other, or you may have even said yourself. I hope things go back to normal. I hope I can visit friends and family soon. I hope there'll be an end to COVID. I hope there will be a a vaccine. I hope our leaders will make the right decisions. I hope people follow the rules and stick to them. I hope that there won't be another lockdown. I hope that I can go back to work. I hope that I don't lose my job. And this Christmas, we are all hoping to spend precious time with families that we all have missed so much. During December, we'll be starting a sermon series called A Thrill of Hope. The Christmas story is a story of hope. This series takes us on a journey through the events of that very first Christmas. And we take a look at how the gift of hope is woven throughout the Christmas story and evident in the lives of those that experience the moment where hope was born. The Nativity characters rejoiced that very first Christmas and all at some point have felt weary. What can we learn from Mary and from Joseph and from the shepherds and from the wise men? Well, they had hope to believe. They had hope to believe what God had promised. They had hope to believe that the child was the son of God. They had hope to believe that he was their saviour and was the saviour of the world. And they had hope to believe for a better future. A well-known Christmas carol, O Holy Night, is our anthem for this Christmas. There is a line that says, a thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices, has never been more relevant than for us today. As we are all feeling weary, weary from being separated from our loved ones, weary from the changes that COVID have brought to our day-to-day lives, weary of the news that we hear every day and the figures of lives lost due to COVID. There are so many people who are not looking forward to tomorrow, to next week or even to next year. Life has placed them in an awful space and it's difficult to see beyond where they are right now. But we can know the hope and we can have hope even though the future is uncertain. But this Christmas, let's be reminded and discover the hope 
we can have in Jesus. The hope that was born over 2000 years ago, that brought the hope of love, of joy and of peace, and the hope of a saviour. We may feel weary, but we can rejoice because of the hope we have in Jesus. We can rejoice because we can know his peace and joy when the storms of life toss us to and fro. And we can rejoice because we know we are loved beyond measure. And we can rejoice because hope was born that first Christmas day. And that hope is still here today for you and me. And that hope gives us the promise of a purpose and a future in him and our Lord and Saviour. So join us this December for our new series, The Thrill of Hope. Be encouraged to embrace the future and to live life in a way that shows that the world, that we love Jesus and Jesus lives in us. Jesus is our reason for hope. And we know that whatever state our lives may be at this moment, we can live and we can have hope. This December, join us and discover the hope of Christmas and share this hope with others this Christmas season. Light of the world, we step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a life spent with you Here I am to worship Here I am to bow down Here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven.
Well, good morning everyone, and God bless you. Uh, I'd like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to um, come into your house by the use of technology and to be able to share with you the Word of God and what God has given to me to and laid upon my heart uh, this day to, to share with you. I'd like to welcome everyone, whether you're from New Life Church or whether you just tuned in to this online service, you're all very welcome and just pray that we together by the Holy Spirit can receive from God that which he has for each and every one of us this day. So let us just briefly pray and invite the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in that which we want to look into this day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you that in these troubled times that we can still join together like this with this online service. And Lord, we know that your word doesn't change and you do not change. So Heavenly Father, we believe that you have something for each and every one of us this day. Lord, whether from this church or not, Lord, we're all welcome together. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. We're united by you, Lord, and by your word. So lead and guide us now. May we have open hearts, listening ears to what you want to say by your Holy Spirit and your word to us this day. Lord, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I'd like uh, this morning to follow along uh, the line of uh, thinking and thoughts that have come to us uh, by various speakers that we've had over the past few weeks and that is along this line that God uses people like us everyday ordinary people he uses people like us to accomplish his word and his plan uh, and his purpose for our lives and for the lives of people that we come into contact with and it is on that particularly lives of people that we come into contact with that I want to talk about uh, this day uh, and, and to realize that even in such troubled times as this there are still people that we come into contact with we might say well we can't have contact <laughs> because of the regulations but within our little bubble and our family uh, gathering what that where we can meet and meet with the regulations by doing this and people that we can come into contact with we can meet there are people that we can meet with and can affect and purpose their and have a purpose for their lives I'd like to take a text this morning from Daniel chapter 12 and just verse 3 and these are prophecies of the end times and about the various peoples and this will um, be very much for us I believe in these times as we firmly believe that we're coming towards those end times. So Daniel chapter 12 12 and verse 3 reads like this those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever and so it is talking to those that are wise wise in the things of God and wise not in their own strength but the wisdom that comes from God and the leading of his Holy Spirit and from the guidance of his word all of which we have this day so let us take full advantage of that I've got two readings for you short readings you'll be glad to, to hear so uh, we'll look into those one well-known very well-known passage of scripture and one perhaps not so well known but we look first very much at the well-known passage of scripture which we find in Matthew and it's Matthew chapter 5 and it's where Jesus is addressing and talking and teaching the people 
and very much is said in her of the teaching of the Lord Jesus for all people, for all times, the people that he spoke to then and indeed the people that he speaks to and the Holy Spirit and his word speaks to today. And this passage from verse 13 of chapter 5 is what is known as the salt and light uh, verses and it talks very much in that way about salt and light but us the Christian people being very much the salt and the light. You'll probably know these scriptures very well but good to look at them again and the challenge that it brings to each and every one of us. It reads like this, you are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its flavour how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that you that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So we are encouraged in this passage of Scripture very much to stand out and to shine, to be different. And I believe very much that it's not, this is not just the words that we say, but indeed it is in the way that we conduct ourselves, in the way that we live our lives, in the way that we come across to other people, those people that we do come into contact with. And I've said it is not always the words that we say as well <laughs> as talking the talk. We need to walk the walk, as it were, and show out with our lives and, and shine and be different in various circumstances. And so, very much so, in these times that we live, in these troubled times, how do we conduct ourselves? How do we come across to other people when they think of us uh, as being a Christian and possibly look to us to see how we act and react to what is going on around us uh, and the COVID situation that we have with lockdown and the various things and the problems that that brings. They look to us and how do we show to them? How do we come across? Do we shine? Do we show forth the uh, difference that we have in our life by the salvation that the Lord has brought about and given to us? by his word that we have to lead us and guide us through such times and the promises that brings and the Holy Spirit to show us, to lead us and guide us and encourage us and raise us up and lift us up when things are not going so well. For the problems that all people have at such time as this, uh, we, are, we are not... Uh, in a position where it doesn't happen to us. Indeed, what happens to everyone else happens to us. The problems that they have, we have. But what we do have is the Lord on our side. The Lord is with us. Very much for us to believe that these, uh, this day, that the Lord hasn't left us, hasn't gone away from us. He's there and he can overcome and help us to overcome any problems that we might have. And as we look around us, we do see people that have the very many problems that this COVID and lockdown brings, that of loneliness, that of fear, that of loss, whether it be loss of a loved one, whether it be loss of privileges, whether it be loss of freedom, whether it be the loss of job or income, loss is a big thing. How many people with the loss of health uh, and well-being, the loss of bereavement and the loss 
of hope. Very much when we think about that, the loss of hope, we above all people should show to others, should shine out that we have a hope in spite of all that which is going on. So we need then to show this to others, show this to people around us, not to, as it were, show off what we are and what we can be, but that they too might find a, a way whereby they have a hope, whereby they might have a, a way that they can come to God and can be, have a life changed and can know him and have all the promises of his word that helps us through such a time as this. I said to you that I had two pieces of scripture, one well known, which we have read, the salt and light, where we are encouraged to be the salt, that which savours, that which keeps things from going rotten, and very much the light of the world to show out, and it is that which we major on this day, the light of the world, as it said, so let your light so shine before men that you might that they might see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I want to look at an Old Testament character um, that perhaps we don't uh, look at too often, but someone that done exactly this. They let their light so shine in the way that they conducted themselves. And as we turn to the Old Testament, we look at this person, and this person was a little Jewish orphan girl. That is how she started off her life. She was an orphan child, Jewess, and she was adopted into a family and was more or less raised by her cousin, although she was adopted, it wasn't directly her cousin, but that's how this person who's ref, uh, referred to as her cousin, who not only raised her, but helped her to come to the position that, that she had. This little girl, this one, rose to a position that was unthought of, or no one would ever have believed that she could obtain or come unto but she became a queen in a massive empire the Persian Empire and this girl's name was Esther and we read there is a book of Esther as we know in the Old Testament and we look at that book of Esther and one of the things that's do, that always stands out to us and is sometimes used in quizzes where it's on Bible things and it is asked which book in the Bible doesn't actually mention God and it is this book of Esther. But having said that, we very much find and very much see the hand of God working in the life of this, this girl this one who became queen and she was chosen uh, by the king from amongst many other girls she was chosen for her beauty both her outward physical beauty and for her inward beauty which if you read through all this we very much see and for you to sort of know all about this lady you need to read this book of Esther for you, yourself because we haven't got the time here to go into the various history of what brought it about and how she became where she was but she became very much involved with the, what was happening at this time and she was used of God used of God in a great way the king might have thought that he chose Esther, he chose her to be his queen. But in actual fact, when we look at this, we do see the hand of God in and upon her life, where she was put in this position. It appeared to be by the king who chose her, but we believe that it was God who put her 
in this position for a specific purpose. And we pick up this reading where it has become uh, evident that there is a plot to do away with the Jews that are still kept in captivity uh, in this place. It, it, there is a plot to, uh, by the, the guy that is the king's second in command, he wants to do away with the uh, Jews. And so Esther is asked if she would go to the king and explain what was happening and plead for the life lives of these people and whether she could be instrumental in uh, thwarting this plot uh, that was about to, to take place. Now with that came a problem because you couldn't just go into the presence of the king even if he was queen as Esther was you couldn't go into the presence of the king because if you did uninvited it was quite possible that he would take your life. You wasn't allowed to. It had to be by his bidding and his command that you could go into uh, the, the presence of the king. And the only way once you had done this that you could escape with your life is that he, if he extended to you the royal scepter, then you would be pardoned for breaking this uh, rulers as it were and your life would be spared so Esther was asked by her cousin Mordecai to go and plead the behalf of the Jews and go into the presence of the king that this plot might be thwarted we have to realize here that even though she was queen this extended to her she could lose her life just as the same as anyone else. So when she was asked this, she responded in this way. All the king's servants, this is Esther chapter 4 and verse 11, all the king's servants and the people of the king's province know that any man or woman who goes into the inner court to the king who has not been called, he has but one law, put all to death, except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter, that he may live. Yet I myself have not been called to go into the king these thirty days. So they told Mordecai Esther's words, and Mordecai told them to answer Esther, Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will, arri will, rise, will arise sorry, for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And so Mordecai, not totally understanding, but believing that when he spoke to Esther, said that you have come and you have been brought into the kingdom you have been given this position of queen for such a time as this to plead on behalf of your people and to save the lives of the Jews and indeed your family's life and possibly your own life as well. And it is those words that we will look very much at for the, uh, today where it reads, Yet who knows whether you've come into the kingdom for such a time as this. You need to read this to yourself, but we find that uh, Esther does exactly that. She goes into the presence of the king. The royal scepter is uh, extended to her. Her life is saved. She pleads on behalf of the Jews 
and the one that would br bring about this plot is put to death instead and their lives and her own life and family's life are saved. And so we see there um, a tremendous happening because if you think this was again a plan of the enemy of God that if he had done away with the Jews there that it's quite possible that the line that came down to Christ of the Jews would have been disrupted and we see the enemy's plan there but through this queen this little orphan Jewish girl that had become queen we see that her light shone out that she shone out and saved the life of her people when we think about it you know it is a tremendous thing that she done there and so when we look at but just before we move on from this when we look at this uh, th this lady this lady Esther uh, and we look at the actual name Esther there is two meanings to it one is myrtle which is meaning sweet uh, and sweet smelling and the other one is star and is that one what we think very much of Esther star she shone out and as our text said those that are wine are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament her star the star Esther shone out in this way of saving her people and so we too need to shine out like this you might say well you know it's a little bit different where I am I'm not in this position I'm not in an honored position I, it's not this was almost uh, as it were uh, world changing and certainly life changing the thing that Esther done I don't think I'm in that position but we are in such a position where we need as we have read to shine out that we might again show that we are the salt and the light and that our light might shine out that men might see our good works and glorify not us but our father who is in heaven and you know when we think about the times that we live in the the the, the, the difficult time that we are having now when more do we need to shine out and we could say that we have been called we have been saved we are uh, to be used by God in such a time as this when people are looking for a hope when people are looking for answers we have both of those things in our Lord Jesus Christ his salvation and the plan that God has for mankind where people can find hope can find encouragement can find the, the joy and the strength and the peace that they need and which so many people require so many people are having problems problems uh, with mental health uh, at this time but we have an answer for so many people if they will but turn to our Lord and I cannot stress enough how important that he that is and how true that is that we can be used in this way for such a time as this and you could say well where can I go you know Queen Esther had trouble going to a place she had to go into a place where she risked her life but we we have where we're at we're not about to change the world as it were but we can change the world and we can change the life of those that we come into contact with as I said before this might be the little bubble that we have the little family uh, gathering of people that we are allowed to come into contact with 
and indeed through social media and indeed through the various technologies that we have and those people of you that use this we can come into contact with people with a message of hope and of joy and of peace and of strength at such a time as this we have been called for such a time as this but as was said to Queen Esther um, at that time and I've just turned over from that at, at this moment but what was said to her uh, by Mordecai that if she didn't go that the Lord would find someone else and another way the Lord's plan the Lord's purpose will not be thwarted but you know he has put us in such a position that we might be used that we might be used at such a time as this when more so then in perhaps in our lifetime will there be a, 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 a situation where we need to show out to shine out our good works the way that we live the way we conduct ourselves through what is going on in the world around us 1 John 5 verses 4 and 5 read like this for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith who, who is he that overcomes the world but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God the world is a difficult place at this moment in all countries this is something that uh, affects the whole world but as we've said our world might be this little um, few people that we come into contact with one way and another that is our world that is where we can shine out where we can show that we have overcome that which is going on around us and we can have victory with that message of hope in the lives of ourselves and of other people we can show our faith and our faith should be strong at such a time if it is not let us draw close to God that our faith might be bolstered that our faith might grow that our faith in him might be strong at such a time gain a couple of scriptures here that just help us in that way to show out to the world around us proverbs 4 and 18 says but the path of the just that is us the path of the just i talked earlier on about walking the walk the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day so as i said there is a path that we take through this life a path that we go a journey that we go through this situation that is going on in the world around us do we shine as we go on that journey john 8 and 12 reads then jesus spoke to them again saying i am the light of the world he who follows me shall not walk in darkness but have the light of life and that is what we show out not of ourselves but the light of the lord jesus and his salvation in our life that changes our life to others what changes our attitude to that which is going on which helps us to be overcomers of all that is going on that gives us that hope that peace that joy and that strength at such a time as these so we are called then as i said to shine out just read that again you are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its flavor how shall it be seasoned it is good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men you 
are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but put it on a lamp standard, and it gives a light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So in conclusion then, let us let that light of the gospel, the light of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, he being the light of the world, let him shine out through us at this difficult time. For at such a time as this, I believe we were called to show out to the world, those around us, to show and to, to shine out that which the Lord has put, the difference that he has made in our life. And we do that by the way that we live our lives, conducting ourselves through the difficult times in which we live. That others li other people's lives might be affected, might change. We might not, as I said, change the whole world, but we might change their world and their life. And if we need to, let us change our own life. Change us to the position where we have that strength, we have that light, we have that faith by the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Holy Spirit that can strengthen us and allow us to build our faith that we might show out our good works and people might glorify our Father in heaven, not glorify us, but glorify him in the change that takes place in their life. You are that light. You were called for such a time as this. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you use such people as us, everyday simple people, but you showed that when you chose your disciples, you didn't use kings and emperors, you didn't use very important people, you used everyday people. So Lord, help us to show out that our light might shine out and let us be used at such a time as this. Lord, we pray and we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a good week. Let your light shine out before men and let the Lord use you in such a time as this. God bless you. Christmas is going to look very different for us this year at NLCC, but it's not cancelled and we're still going to have the opportunity to be able to gather together and celebrate Christmas. We will continue with our online services on a Sunday at 10.30, going live from our YouTube channel. We'll also have the opportunity to gather physically together on Sunday the 13th of December at 11 o'clock for a short service of worship and again on Sunday the 20th of December for car park carols. Car park carols will start at 4 o'clock and we plan to have a fun carol service where you can sing to your heart's content your favourite carols from the comfort of your own car. This will be a great event for all the family and we look forward to seeing you there and celebrating with us. Both events will have COVID secure measures in place and we are excited about having this opportunity to have two opportunities actually where we can gather together physically. We'll bring you more information about these couple of events over the next few weeks. And on Christmas Eve we'll have a special online service that goes live at four o'clock. A chance to gather the family together to stop and pause during the, the festivities and everything that's taking place. It's a time for us to give thanks and for us to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Saviour. You can watch this at any point during the evening, but we just encourage you to be a part of that and to just give some time before we move into the busyness of Christmas Day. 
There'll also be the opportunity to be able to gather online via Zoom uh, for um, a couple of life group sessions, as well as there'll be a day devotional that will give us a countdown to Christmas. So there's opportunities for you to gather uh, with us as a church during December, as well as with each other. With many of our events being online this year, they are accessible to all. So we invite you to get involved, play your part. You can do this by sharing our services with your friends and your family. Send the link by text or to a WhatsApp group. Share on social media. We have a real opportunity this year to take hope to people without them even setting foot through the door of the church. So be a part of Christmas at NLCC this year.